just start recording. Oh, hey, it works. Okay, this is going to be a bad intro to the video, but that doesn't matter. Because the important thing is we're going to learn how to do sound effects slash music, adding that to a project. I'm just going to make some basic project here, uh, and then you can figure out how to integrate it with your larger project. The important thing is just noticing where I put the code. So if you see I put something in my setup, you need to put it in your setup. The actual playing of the music and sound effects will be a little more specific, but I'll leave that up to you to sort of figure out. There'll be a little bit of um, trial and error involved and definitely some learning involved in where to put it, but I think that'll, that'll work out pretty well. So first step to anybody getting music working in their project is they have to go to the sketch folder, or sorry, sketch uh, menu. I'll zoom in. And you've got to go to import library. Uh, it's called the Minim library, and you'll see that I have a bunch of libraries in starred, installed. Installed? Uh, there is mine. You won't see that because you haven't installed it yet. So what you have to do is go to the top one, add library. I wouldn't recommend, well, actually, whatever, you do what you want. Uh, this is on a video, so if you can't type because you're installing, it's no big deal. You click on add library, and again, the library is called Minim. So you just type in M-I-N-I-M. It's the same backwards as it is forwards. And I think I might be having some internet connectivity problems. So you probably won't have this spinning wheel of death. But I do. But if you click Minim uh, and search, you'll find the library. Just click and install it, and you will be able to use it after that. So that's step one. Install the library. If anybody here loses processing off your desktop, you know once in a while your desktop just disappears, uh, <laughs> you'll have to do this step again. It takes about three to five minutes, depending on how many people are watching YouTube and the Vancouver School Board at, at the given time you try to do it. So that's great. Everybody good to step one? install the library. Step two, you need to go and actually add the library. So once you've installed it, it will be an option, as it is for me right here. You'll just select Minim and look at all the wonderful code that happened. Oh, it's just kind of slow. I'm not too sure why on my Surface uh, processing lags so hard. I, I'm not sure what's going to... Oh, there we go. Hey, it came. So you get all these import statements. It doesn't really matter... Like, there's nothing there you under, need to understand. Uh, it adds it for you, and essentially what it's doing is uh, signing that library book out, if you will. The library book contains all the code that makes the, this happen. So this is importing all the code from this Minim library, and now you'll be able to use it. So that's sort of the next step there, is to actually get all those import statements. So one more time, you just go to Sketch Menu, Import library, and if it's installed, you'll see it as an option. You just click it, and it'll add all those import statements for you. Next step. I know I'm going fast, but hopefully it's not too fast. Uh, I'm going to put in void setup and void draw. Um, here we go. We're going to make a couple of variables. So just like when we bring in an image into a project, we have to have a variable to store that image, right? So we also have to have variables to store music and sound effects. So it turns out uh, we're going to need what are called audio player variables. An audio player stores a piece of sound, a sound file of some kind, music or a sound effect or whatever it is. And they just give it a name. So I'm going to call mine music. You also need another variable to make the minim library work. It's a of type minim, which is a lot of minims. Oh, come on in. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. I so appreciate that. Uh, anywhere is fine. Thank you so much. I left all my stuff in the library and totally forgot about it. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so anyway, so we're going to do the minim variable. It'll be my minim is what I'm going to call mine. No reason. You don't have to call it that, but uh, whatever. It's just, uh, just going to be something we're going to use to do a couple of um, setup type stuff. So I'll just make, it doesn't even matter, you'll have size and you'll have all those things in your setup. Just at the top you can load your music. Uh, first thing you got to do is this my minim variable, you just have to uh, connect the sketch to the minim library. I know it's, it's rather complicated so I apologize we need to do all these steps. But these are the same steps you do every time so it's no big deal. Uh, you would say my minim equals new minim this. So this line of code is kind of a mystery to us right now. We haven't really seen this. This refers to this sketch. So we're connecting minim and this sketch together. And now my minim will sort of act like a toolbox with a bunch of tools in it that we can use to load music and do some other music stuff. Uh, but for the most part, we just need it to load music. All right. 
So, uh, next step after that is actually have to load our sound files. Oh, hey, I don't have any sound files. Uh, so you'll probably want to download some music from whatever source, or, or just get music files from whatever source you can find. I'm just going to save my sketch. Oh, man. Saving on a on my Surface computer takes forever. I'm not too sure why, so I'll just let it go. Uh, the important thing is to know that you need to take whatever music file you have and stick it into your sketch folder. And you can get to your sketch folder by, like, if you're inside of here. Whoops, I'll just go to desktop. I'll call it, um, ex wow, my desktop be stacked. Uh, I'll just call it example. Uh, the important thing is you have to have the uh, file in there. You can press Control K, maybe, eventually, to show the sketch folder. There we go. There's my sketch folder. It's got nothing in it. So this is where you need to put the music files. One more time, when you're you know, programming your game, if you want to know where to put the music files, press Control K. And it opens it up in here, and this is, you know, right now I just have one file. You probably have some pictures and stuff. That's the place where you need to put your music files. And I'll just grab a random music file from my computer. You can, you know, get files, MP3 files from whatever sources uh, you like, and I can show you some more about that. Uh, I am going to search up an uh, MP3 file of some kind. I'm sure I got an MP3. Oh man, a river flows in you. There we go, sure. Let's take that one. Okay, so I'm going to bring this file in. I'm going to just change this name because I don't want to type all that. I'm just going to call it river, river.mp3. And there we go. Now I can load river.mp3 and make it play and it'll be lovely and we'll show you how to do that. So once you have your music file in the right place, to load it, you just take your variable, like music is mine, and you say music equals my minim dot load file. And I just give it the name of the file, which I just made, right? It was called river.mp3. It's always going to have a dot something in the end. So even if you don't see it in your computer, because the way the folders are set, they don't show extensions, it's got to be dot mp3 or dot wav. Those are really your only two choices. Okay, wow, that was a lot of work. <laughs> so we've loaded the file, and now we can finally play the music. The easiest way to do it is just in your setup. If you just have one song that plays through your whole project, you can just get it playing in your setup, and I'll just continue to play the whole way through. You can say whatever sound you've loaded, music, for example, dot play. And it will play that song. So I'll press start just to demonstrate. It works. I think it'll work. There it goes. I'm not sure what happened here. So it's playing the music. Woohoo! So, uh, there you go. That's how you can play music. It's a little bit different for sound effects, though. If you want something to kind of play when an event occurs, so if you want to have, say, a bounce sound play when the code happens uh, in your game function, when it bounces off a wall, that's a little bit more complicated. Just to give you an idea what that would look like, you have to find the if statement where you want that to happen. It's almost always an if statement. You don't want a sound effect that's constantly happening. You have sound effects that happen when you click on something or when you uh, bounce off the wall, and those are always if statements, right? So in some if statement somewhere, if you wanted a sound effect to happen, you have to do it to two different things. You'd have to say, you know, I, I don't want to use music as an example because that obviously contains music. Uh, let's say I have an audio player variable called bounce. And let's say I don't have this. It's not, this won't work, but just pretend for a second I do. Uh, I have a bounce sound effect that I can load. Maybe it's called bounce.mp3. And if I want that sound to play every time it hits the wall, there's some kind of if statement somewhere. And I'll let you guys kind of figure that part out where it's like if x is less than zero or x is greater than 600 or something like that, you can then put in the bounce code. And it looks like this, bounce.play. That's good, but it turns out that it, once it's done playing, it, doesn't, it can't start again. It's like it's at the end of the file and it's stuck. If you try to play it again, it's still at the end of the file. It kind of remembers where you were. So in order to make that happen, uh, you have to first say bounce.rewind. That sort of sets it back to the beginning again. So this combination of things is required when you play a sound effect. 
And this is all you need if you're just playing a piece of music. Last couple of things, just for interest's sake, uh, you don't have to say music.play. There's a couple of things you could do. You can say music, uh, yeah, there we go, dot loop. This means that it'll keep playing over and over again, and it won't stop until you turn off the program. So that's a nice thing to do if you have a short song that you want to just keep playing over and over again. That's an option. Also, if you want to have more than one song, maybe an intro song, and then a game playing song, and then a game over song, uh, then there's a piece of code that pauses the music. Uh, I don't have a good place to show you where you would put that code, because I don't know where you'd want to do that. It depends on what you're trying to do. But if you want to stop one song from playing, you can say music or whatever dot pause. And that will stop music from playing. And then you can say, you know, whatever, whoops. Whatever your next song is, then you can say music uh, two, for example, dot play. So this would pause one song and start another one. This code probably should go somewhere you're like only doing once, like in a transition between modes or something like that. But that's how you would stop one song and start another song. So there it is in like a few minutes how you would add in Minim to a project. There's still the work that you'd have to do to figure out how this all works with your project. But that's good work to do. That'll make sure you sort of have mastered that concept. It's not just kind of typing things in. So hope that helped out. Any questions before we stop the video? No questions? Okay, video stopped.